From Advisory Board, we're bringing you a radio advisory. My name is Rachel Woods. You can call me Ray. Earlier this week, CMS released the Inpatient Prospective Payment System proposal. This is for fiscal year 2021, and that's a mouthful, so I'm going to be calling it IPPS. This is something that's updated every year, and it marks the reimbursement changes hospital leaders need to prepare for. IPPS is a big deal, so I wanted to bring Emily Conley back to Radio Advisory to give us an update on the proposed rule. Hey, Emily. Hey, thanks for having me back. I think we should go ahead and and just dive in because this is a pretty big document. I think it ended up being just over 1,600 pages. Is that right? Yep, just over 1,600, so it's been a fun 72 hours. (laughs) That's right. Why don't you do some level setting for us first? What is IPPS and why is it something that hospital leaders should care about? IPPS is the formal rule that updates how hospitals are paid for inpatient Medicare services. The process happens every year. There's a proposed rule. There's a comment period where hospitals and really anyone who has a stake in the rule can comment. Then CMS will consider those comments, and finally, they'll issue the final rule. And we knew this was coming out this spring. In fact, the last time we spoke, you were actually preparing for this exact rule to drop. So when you were waiting for the 2021 proposed rule, what updates were you expecting? So this one's kind of tricky. We weren't really sure what was going to happen with everything going on with the pandemic. You know, there's a world in which you could see CMS saying we have to continue with everything that we had planned. And there's a world in which you can see CMS saying, you know, hospitals are dealing with a lot right now. So we need to scale back and we need to limit this to really what we think is essential. And while it's impossible possible to know what could have been in prior drafts, CMS did say that they limited the rule to, quote, essential policies since hospitals are dealing with so much right now. So was there something that you were expecting that maybe didn't actually make it into the proposed rule because it's not an essential policy? CMS did acknowledge that previously they said they were going to include a methodological change or potentially even an overhaul of the hospital star rating program in this year's proposed rule, and they didn't do that. They promised to include it in future rulemaking processes. Hmm, Got it. So Emily, what's actually the biggest news coming out of the proposed rule this year? In my opinion, the biggest news is definitely the inclusion of a price transparency proposal. So a little bit of background. In 2019, the administration finalized a rule that would require the disclosure of payer-specific negotiated charges starting in fiscal year 2021. So in this rule, CMS is proposing that because hospitals already have to report that data, they'd like them to include a summary of the data on their hospital cost reports beginning in 2021. They're also proposing to use that information to potentially inform how they weight the MSDRGs, which would impact payment rates. Uh, Currently, CMS uses cost and charge information from the cost reports to inform that weighting. And you know all too well that oftentimes hospital leaders tend to actually not welcome some of the changes that come with IPPS. And I'm, I'm guessing this is one of the updates that's causing a little bit of backlash. For sure. Uh, as you can imagine, hospitals are not a fan of the transparency proposal that I mentioned earlier. Uh, AHA pretty quickly came out against the proposed rule as well. And in fact, it was just last week that a U.S. district court heard arguments in AHA v. Azar, which is the hospital's legal challenge to the 2019 transparency rule. And I think the, the big thing to take away here is that CMS is not backing down from price transparency. They said that given everything going on with COVID-19, they limited this rule to, quote, essential policies, and yet they still chose to include price transparency. And so, again, in my opinion, the only way I see CMS backing down from this is if the courts strike it down. 
Hmm. And we know that price transparency is perhaps the most interesting but controversial inclusion in this year's rule. I'm curious, are there any parts of the proposed rule that hospital leaders will be particularly pleased about? I don't know if we could say pleased per se with the payment rate updates, but I do think that this year's rule included a fairly healthy payment rate increase. Hmm, Tell me more about that. So at the highest level, there's two numbers to care about. The, the first number is the market basket update, which, as I mentioned, is fairly healthy bump at 3.1%. But arguably, the more important number is the second one, and that's 1.6%. So after factoring in other adjustments, things like changes to uncompensated care payments, readmissions penalties, things like that, hospitals should expect something closer to a 1.6 overall increase. Hmm. And in real dollars, that translates to about a $2 billion increase in payments if finalized as proposed. And I know that there were some notable updates that affect specific service lines. What service lines would be the most affected by the proposed rule? We're still doing in-depth service line analyses, but the headliners right now are orthopedics and oncology. Is there one that you'd like me to start with? Let's do orthopedics. Yep. Orthopedics is definitely a major service line for most hospitals, and specifically, hip and knee replacements tend to be very high-volume procedures. In this rule, CMS is proposing new MSDRGs for hip replacements with fractures. Now, to spare the listeners, I'm not going to list out the DRG numbers, but for some of these cases a reclassification would mean an almost 15% payment increase. I definitely encourage people who are service line leaders or particularly interested in uh, how they know this will affect their hospital finances to check out the blog that we wrote for more detail. And we will be releasing a detailed service line analysis in the coming weeks. And we will put those directly in the show notes for all of you who are eagerly looking for those MSDRG numbers. So you mentioned there were two headliners when it came to service lines. Tell me about oncology. Oncology programs are likely going to be a fan of this proposal. CMS is proposing to add a new DRG for CAR-T therapies. Previously, hospitals were reimbursed for CAR-T through the DRG for bone marrow transplant, and then they would receive some add-on payments to help offset the high cost of CAR-T therapies. And while that is certainly good news for oncology leaders, our early analysis indicates that it probably still won't cover the full cost of treatment at the Medicare rates. They're also going to make a distinction or are proposing to make a distinction between clinical trials and non-clinical trial therapies when calculating the relative weights for the proposed DRG. But again, I'm going to spare the listeners all the technical details, see the, the blog and subsequent analyses for more information on that. Emily, I'm curious, is there anything else specific about the proposed rule that we haven't talked about yet that you'd like to update our listeners on? There's always some updates to quality reporting, Um, and in this year's proposed rule, we saw that CMS is pushing to increase eCQM quality reporting requirements and also increase transparency. So at the high level, they're proposing to put eCQM data on hospital compare, which could have a pretty big reputational impact for hospitals. So the takeaway here is that if your hospital hasn't been focusing on eCQM data accuracy because so far it's been pay for reporting, you should definitely start to ramp up those efforts. Hmm. And is there anything that surprised you as you read through all 1,600 odd pages? To be honest, not really. They didn't mention the pandemic as much as I might have guessed, 
but it does look like they're going to delay the release of the final rule since they're pretty busy over there. It's usually released 60 days prior to the implementation date. And this year, it will probably be released more like 30 days prior to the implementation date, which means hospitals are going to have less time to review the the final rule and the changes. Got it. So Emily, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. What is your biggest takeaway from this year's proposed IPPS rule? Overall, I thought the market basket update was about as expected. And it's clear that price transparency is a huge priority for this administration. But as always, this is still a proposed rule. So if if you feel strongly as a stakeholder, hospital, or health system executive, one way or the other, either in support of these proposals or opposed to these proposals, you should absolutely submit your feedback to CMS. You have until 5 p.m. Eastern on July 10th to do so. And for all the listeners, definitely keep your eyes out for more in-depth analyses from our research teams in the coming weeks. And I'm sure when that happens, we'll have you back on the podcast. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Emily. This year's proposed rule just dropped on May 11th. So as Emily said, our teams are going through all 1,600 pages to figure out what exactly leaders like you need to pay attention to. For a more in-depth analysis, check out the link in our show notes. And as always, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Chris with the Radio Advisory Team. On behalf of everyone at Advisory Board, thank you for everything you're doing to battle COVID-19. We want to help you celebrate the bright spots. Perhaps you've been amazed at how your teams, your peers, or your leaders are supporting you. Or perhaps a patient's words reminded you of why you do what you do. What bright spots are you seeing? We want to hear from you. Share your story at advisory.com slash thank you and view our message of thanks. Thanks.